just being around gangs, you know, I thought that's where I started seeking love, you know, because they said they were my family. But I was seeking love, but I was seeking love in the wrong directions, gangs, drugs, alcohol. I was just a person that just thought like the world, just like it is what it is. This is what I know. This is how it's going to be. And this is how I'll live. And this is the way I'm going to die. But I never had any hope. What's going to be my career? What do, I want to, what do I want to do in my life? How do I want to better myself? I didn't have no direction of any kind of what I wanted to, to be. I mean, my dad was a good provider, but he wasn't there spiritually like I wanted him to love on me the way I needed to love. He would always tell me, mijo, go get me a beer from the fridge. See, my dad wasn't taught because my grandpa never taught him either. I became like my dad because he was my role model. He was my hero. And I, I wanted to be like him. My family never believed they, they, in me. They would say, you're going to end up just like your father. You're always going to be a drunk. Things started catching up with me. Just I got one DUI one year. Two years later, I got another DUI. And... After that, I just said, there has to be more to this, more to life. Well, my buddy uh, Joe and Cindy just kept inviting me to church for, the, for a whole year. They never, get, never gave up on me. But my excuse was always, I got to go to work. I have something to do. Always made up an excuse of not to go. Um, but to this day, I'm thankful that I did take his, <laughs> his invitation because he got bold with me and told me, Tony, how come you don't just take the invitation like I was to invite you over to the house for a barbecue? So I said, okay. I took the invitation, but as respect, just to go. So I went to church, and it was maybe 15, 20 minutes into the worship when I had a head-on collision in the spirit with, with God, and I started crying. I just felt that moment when I had that head-on collision with him, I felt like, wow. I didn't even know what pain was. I didn't know what being confused was. I didn't know, I didn't know, just everything that I was feeling was being removed, my burdens of just hating life, hating myself who I, for who, who I was, who I became. So when I surrendered, I just, heard, I just heard God just tell me in the spirit, it is time. And I surrendered and ever since then, I never looked back. A vision that God had put in my heart um, to start a clothing line. But before that started, I was already purchasing clothes online. Pray hats, Jesus caps, and um, I would wear it out to the gym. And I had random people just walking up to me and say, thank you for wearing that pray hat. It reminds me that I need to pray. Thank you for wearing that Jesus hat. That it reminds me that Jesus is with me. God spoke to me in the spirit and he told me that he wanted me to start my own clothing line and spread the message here in the Central Valley. I did a sketch of faith and at, as I was doing faith, I started sketching it out. And as I was doing that, he was ministering to my spirit and saying, army font, army print, you are a soldier of Christ. So that's what I started doing. And then he said, heartbeat, you're alive. So I sketched out heartbeat, okay? And then he said, a cross. So I put, sketched out a cross, and I stepped to the T for a cross and saying that he died on the cross for us. It is done. It is, it is finished. But I was skeptical but like anybody else would be. I, I told him I didn't have the, the funds to start this business. He goes, don't forget, I'm your provider. What I did, I went to a local uh, printing shop here in Fresno, and um, I walked in, and I told him my vision, what I, I, my plans were to, to do with the apparel. And he goes, I want to help you. I want to help you spread the message. I see what you're doing. It's really awesome to impact the Central Valley. And um, I don't want, I don't, I'm not going to charge you. It's, it's, it's all in the house. I said, wait a minute, really? He said, yeah. He goes, I want to help you. I want to get you going so we could get the word out there. Right now I'm connected right now with the Fitness Evolution and um, I've been with Fresno uh, Police Chaplain Department, Cornerstone Church. You gotta just let go and let God, just let him do what he needs to do. And a lot of people don't have hope and that's where Armor of Faith comes, where I can get to share the love of Christ. It's a reminder that we call Relay, that we need to have 
faith in our Lord and Savior, regardless of what we go through in life, yeah. you know, through the storm, through the trials, but we got to have faith in Him that we're going to overcome the battles of the world. Right. And this is just a reminder to the world, hey, have faith in our Lord and Savior that you're going to overcome when it comes in waves, when it comes in storms, because we got to remember that your lifeguard walks on water. When you feel that you're drowning, always remember that your lifeguard walks on water. It's more than just a peril. It's a message to the world. See, I used to be on fire for the world. I used to go hard for the sin. Now I go hard for the kingdom. It's amazing how what God could do just through a clothing line, a vision that he had, a dream that he had. And that's where I get to share the love of Christ with people and, and encourage them to not give up, fight the good fight of faith.